Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 96 mindful meditation. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my enlightened and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty well. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So uh, just in advance here, I do want to apologize. I'm a bit sniffly today. I think it's mostly uh, allergies uh, than any rather than anything else. Mm. So if I do have uh, some sniffles during the show, uh, I apologize in advance. So today, we will be talking mindful meditation. Now, we've talked different types of meditations. We've referenced different different types of meditations in the past. Um, But we've never ever actually covered meditation techniques on any show yet. Mm. Mindful meditation is one that, in my research... Seems very suited, very well suited for teens because it tends to help out in areas where teens tend to have the most anxiety. Okay. Uh, So today we're going to talk about what mindful meditation is. We'll explore why teenagers should explore mindful meditation. Then we'll take a look at the benefits of it. We'll show you how to teach your teens mindful meditation. And finally, we'll show you a few simple anxiety exercises and mindful activities for teens. And then we'll finish up with your closing remarks and shout outs. Alrighty. But before we get into that, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. We are available. Audio versions of the podcast are available as insights into teens. All of our video versions for all of our podcast shows are available under Insights into Things. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and pretty much any place you can find podcasts. I would also invite folks to reach out to us and provide us some feedback on how we're doing here and what you'd like to see. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on Instagram. We are at insights into things, or you can get us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is mindful meditation? So the notes here come from, uh, psychcentral.com. So before we start, let me ask, have you ever heard of the term mindful meditation? Uh, no, not really. How about meditation in general? Do you meditate? Uh, mm, not technically, I don't think. Are you aware of meditation techniques? Yes. Tell us ones you're aware of. Like, like sometimes listening to meditation music and like closing your eyes and taking deep breaths, that kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> I think you'll find that some of those things are kind of included in mindful meditation. Okay. So you're probably familiar with the term meditation, but mindfulness is something many aren't familiar with. Okay. <clears throat> Let me adjust the mic so I can actually read my notes here. <laughs> Uh, When you practice mindfulness, you are purposely filling your mind with something. So when you have anxiety or you can't sleep or something like that, what what do you experience? Give us some a rundown of when you're experiencing anxiety of, you know, in, in preparation for a test or something like that. 
Well, when I do feel anxiety, I feel, um, well, my blood pressure, eh. My blood pressure, I feel as though, kind of rises. I start to panic. Um, I sometimes get emotional with that kind of stuff, and, like, um, I think it's basically the end of the world when I'm extremely stressed or have extreme anxiety. And for sleeping, well, I can't entirely sleep. I, like, kind of, like, move around, toss and turn, and if I can't, and, um, if, and if I can't get into a com- and, like, when I do feel anxiety, I can't get into a comfortable position. Okay. <clears throat> so, with mindful meditation, you're choosing to focus on something, and this is kind of what I've told you in the past. You know, when I, uh, when I have trouble sleeping, in my mind, I'll focus on a task, either a, re- a repetitive task or something that requires concentration or dexterity, like building a house, you know, laying the foundation and putting the walls up and putting the drywall, you know, things that are iterative, that have a, a, a progression to them that allows me to focus on them. You, you hear um, people say, oh, well, if, you, if you're having trouble sleeping, try counting sheep. And that's the same type of thing. What it does is it forces your mind to clear all the thoughts of the things that are causing your anxiety and focus on something that's very simple and repetitive that it doesn't cause you any anxiety. Mm. So that's kind of what mindful meditation is. It could be breathing. It could be a phrase that you say over and over again. It could be um, a body part. You know, you could flex your hand and focus on flexing your hand repeatedly and allow that to be your your focus. Uh, It could be an image that you're looking at. For instance, if you're in your bedroom and there's a nightlight or there's a picture on your wall or a stuffed animal, you could just focus on that, you know, uh, kind of detailing the outlines of it and what it's made from and, and things like that. Basically, to focus, to force all that other stuff out of your mind that, that's causing anxiety. Mm-hmm. The important part is that you're focusing on something that's going to help you relax along with calming your mind and body. Because I think one of the things you run into when you can't sleep is your mind's going a mile a minute. You may be worrying about school. You may be worrying about, you know, Sunday and the Monday going, starting that school week off again or something like that. What are some of the things that when you have trouble sleeping, what are some of the things that are going through your mind at that time? When I have trouble sleeping, um, it's usually like, especially during the week, like, okay, you're going to have to get up at this time. If you don't fall asleep at a certain time, you're not going to get a good sleep and you're not going to do well. That's one of the things that happens. Time is always something that I think about when I am kind of worried. So, um, so your focus tends to be on not sleeping in general. Yeah. And that kind of self-perpetuates itself then. You worry about not sleeping and then you can't sleep and then you worry more about not being able to sleep. Yep. So mindfulness works because it helps you replace your stressful thoughts and anxiety with something positive. For example, if a teenager is stressed out about an upcoming test at school, they may be able to think of little else. That means they may lose sleep over it. They may have a more difficult time studying, lose enjoyment on other things in life. So it tend, those, those anxiety-inducing thoughts tend to overwhelm you in, in different aspects of your life pretty quickly. Your mind is consumed by the anxiety and the stress over the test. Now, like I do, you know, parents can tell you not to think about it. You know, don't, you know, think of something else. But it's one of those things where that's easier said than done, right? Mm-hmm. What, what are your thoughts when I, because I try not to say that anymore because I know how difficult it is. But like if you're worrying about something and mommy or daddy says, all right, well, don't worry about it and just go to sleep. How does that make you feel? It makes me even more worried, cause, um, cause like you guys are telling me, you know, just go to sleep, and that's what I tell myself, and I can't, yeah. and like, it just adds on to that anxiety and keeps me up. Yeah, so that kind of makes us part of the problem, not part of the solution at that point. Mm. 
Um, so if you spend some time practicing mindful meditation, you can purposefully choose something calming to think about instead of trying not to think about something, which is usually what a lot of people, that's the trap a lot of people fall into. It's like, oh, that, that chest, that test, I got, I got to stop thinking about that test. And the more you tell yourself that, the more you think about it. Yeah. So the technique here is, well, instead of thinking about the test or trying not to, let's fill our mind with something else, something that's not stressful, something that's fun, that's positive, that I like. Um, and at that point in time, before you even realize it, you're no longer thinking about those stress inducers. Do you think something like that would work for you? Um, I definitely think that because, like, every time you tell yourself not to think of something, you're just thinking about it more. Like, you're thinking about not thinking about it, and then when you not, and then when you tell yourself not to think about that, you start thinking about that again. Right. So why should teens learn mindful meditation? Well, while life is already complicated for teenagers, it's not going to get it's not going to get any it's not going to get easier on its own. High school may feel like a challenge, but what follows tends to be even more of a challenge. Students either transition to college or to the workforce, both of which include new environments, social settings and responsibilities. Learning how to get stress and anxiety under control as a teenager will help set them up f to make these transitions into adult life much smoother and easier than continuing on the path they are on. Right. And this kind of goes back to what we've talked about in the past, that <clears throat> the stuff that you're going through now, you know, in middle school and high school is very relevant to you. It's very stressful. It's very important. Your whole life centers around it. Mm -hmm. But it's, in reality, it's really a, a small chunk of what the rest of your life is going to entail. And until you get old, like me, you don't really appreciate how little impact that time in high school has on the rest of your life. Mm. But now, when it's less impactful overall is a good time to learn the ability to cope with all these stresses later in life that are going to get worse. Uh. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, where if you learn how to deal with it now, when you're 25 years old and you're looking for a job and you're having trouble finding a job, and you need to because you need to buy food and pay for car insurance and put a roof over your head, that's much more stressful on you then, oh, my God, I might not get 100 on a test, right? <laughs> when you look at those two in, in perspective, yeah, the one when you're 25 is a lot more stressful because it's life impacting. It's not just your scholastic career impacting. So if you learn how to deal with those things early on and you continue to practice them, by the time you're 25 and you hit those really stressful things, you'll be a master at dealing with them at that point. <laughs> So that's kind of the philosophy that we're going on here. Questions about where we are with mindful meditation and what it is? Nope, I think I got a good idea of it. All right. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about the benefits of mindful meditation. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to this week's edition of Insights into Teens. We are talking mindful meditation and what the benefits of mindfulness are. 
So one of the benefits is improved sleep habits, which is one of the things that it's one of the main reasons why I, I wanted to do this topic because of some of the issues you were having with sleep. So mindfulness can help students put their minds at rest and get a better night's sleep, which is exactly what you need in some of the situations you're running into. What else can uh, we benefit from with mindfulness? We can have improved attention spans. Uh, practicing mindfulness on a regular basis can help students improve their attention span. This helps them. Pay, this helps them. This helps them to pay it. Be, once the, again, <laughs> once more with feeling. This helps them pay attention better in class, which can lead to improved grades. There you go. If only it would help us to improve our ability to read our lines. <laughs> One of the other things we get is reduced levels of anxiety, which, you know, given 96 podcasts, 96 episodes of this podcast, I don't think there's been a single instance where we haven't mentioned or referenced anxiety in teens because it's... It's one of the most anxiety-ridden points in people's lives. So we can reduce levels of anxiety. So learning the, to, turn, to turn from negative thoughts and stress helps students lower their anxiety levels. What else do we have? Um, it, also lowers the ch it can also lower the chance of substance abuse. An addiction center reports that some teams... Eh, some teens with anxiety disorder turn to substances like alcohol and drugs in an effort to numb the stress they, that they are feeling. When they know healthy ways to handle anxiety, stress, and depression, it reduces the chance that they will, self that they will try to self-medicate with drugs and al or alcohol. And that's a very important point because as we face more and more stress, as we go through life, people deal with stress differently. They, some people can handle it internally, you know, without any issue. Mm -hmm. Others don't have that capability to cope directly with it, or they don't have these, these alternative techniques. And a lot of people wind up turning to substance abuse because the artificial effects that you get from alcohol or drugs give you that calming effect that you're looking for, but not without sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know as well as I do some of the downfalls of substance abuse, you know, especially highly addictive substances. Um, you know, I lived through a uh, family with an alcoholic father, so I saw the impacts myself on it. But if you learn the techniques to manage these without that, and we're not even talking, I'm not even just talking like, illicit drugs and stuff. A lot of times people who can't handle the stress go to a professional and the professionals prescribe medications that help you deal with those stress. Mm -hmm. But all medications, any chemicals that you put into your body, there's negative effects to it, whether it's under the control of a doctor or it's a substance abuse situation. Mm -hmm. So anytime that you can handle these situations without having to turn to a chemical alternative, is overall it's a better thing. There's no there's no ill side effects to mindful meditation. Whereas even if you're getting prescription medication from your doctor, that can cause, you know, bodily harm if it's not monitored correctly and and, and there's a cost associated with it. Mm -hmm. The last thing we have here is that it helps to regulate emotions. So in society, it's commonly known that teenagers can be more emotional. Would you agree with that? Probably, yeah. Yeah. They are dealing with a new influx of hormones, and it can make them feel like they're out of control. You ever get that feeling yourself, where you just don't have control of your emotions? I mean, yeah. Especially before I even learned how to control my emotions. When I first started getting hormones in sixth grade, I felt as though whenever I lashed out at my friends accidentally, I had no control over, my, over what I was doing. Like... In the moment, I was mad at that point, but then later on, I'm like, why was I even mad? Yeah, and I went through something similar when I was that age as well, and I had real anger management problems moving forward because I never learned the techniques to, to handle those things. Uh, and at the time, they, no one really pushed meditation or anything like that. It was a very different 
environment back then where you, you didn't talk about your emotions. Um, you kind of were expected to deal with them on your own. And if you didn't, then there was something wrong with you. You were crazy. You, you got some kind of label on you. And my outlet was usually some type of physical violence. And I would get into fights a lot as a result of that. And I had a reputation as a bit of a troublemaker for a period of time there. Mm -hmm. So the last thing they talk about is, is when you practice mindful medication, medication, right. When you practice mindfulness, uh, teens learn how to connect with themselves on a deeper, deeper level and gain control of their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And that's something I think we all strive for. Nobody wants to be controlled by their emotions. At this point in time, do you think that you control your emotions or do your emotions control you? Well, for the most part, I think I'm kind of grounded with my emotions. Um, I can kind of handle certain situations better than others. But, yeah, there are those times where um, my emotions do invention do inevitably take over and kind of control me and it takes a little bit to you know wrangle them back yeah and it, it you know struggling with emotional control especially in teens and especially in teen girls who teen girls experience it sooner than boys do and research suggests that they experience it more intensely than boys do um it's difficult to control that. Your emotions are something that can very quickly run out of control. And when you feel that control slipping away, it causes even more anxiety, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what happens when you feel you're starting to lose that emotional control? Do you still go through that now or have you mastered that yet? Well, I feel as though I definitely have don't lash out like I used to like before I used to get angry at very little things and I'd also and I wouldn't just lash out at inanimate objects but I'd lash out at people and yeah relationships didn't exactly uh that definitely didn't help with relationships now I really don't have that more or less it's just a matter of anxiety um, such, and mainly towards school, and I still need to kind of learn how to not have that happen. So I know I'm better off now than I was before, but uh, I could be better. So when you go through these situations, how do you typically control? Is there a, a meditation technique that you do? Do you do breathing exercises? What do you do to try to rein in those emotions? Well, my the best way I can think of it is to kind of take a step back and go relax, focus on something else, um, watch a video, watch a TV episode for a little bit, and then go back to what I was doing. And that's exactly what we're talking about when we talk about mindfulness meditation. It's about flushing those those stressful thoughts, those anxiety-ridden uh, thoughts with something else. It could be watching a TV show or watching a movie or building, you know, a Lego project or jumping on Sims for a little bit. Whatever it is, it's a matter of trying to clear those thoughts from your head. So even though you may not have been aware of the concept of mindful meditation, it sounds like you've been using it in the past without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. Now, how effective is that for you? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most effective, how effective do you think those techniques are for you? Um, about a 7.8. And when they don't work, what's your alternative? Um, when they don't work, the best bet is to come to you guys. Um, you guys are very supportive, and if I can't distract myself or take my mind off of something, I immediately go to you guys for some help. Okay. And I think that's probably a very good idea because a lot of times, even with these techniques, things can still be overwhelming. Whether it's one big thing that's really bothering you or a bunch of little things. And that's usually what happens with me. Like the big things, I don't usually sweat too much. Because uh, when there's a big thing that I'm worried about, a project at work or something with the house, I look at that big thing, I break it down into smaller chunks, and I deal with those chunks 
in turn, and it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Mm. Where I tend to be overwhelmed and overstressed is when there's a whole bunch of little things that are piling up, and I have to spread my attention too thin on all those things, and I can't do them in a linear order. You know, do this one, then this one, then this one. I might have five things that all require my attention at once. And that is something that I tend to struggle with when it's like that. And I think men in general, males in general do. Whereas women, and I'm pretty sure you can attest to this from from some of the uh, episodes of Brain Games that you've watched. Women are much better at multitasking like that than men are. Mm Mm-hmm. What do you find overwhelms you? Is it the big things or the little things where you have to stop and focus? Well, a lot of times it's really just the little things for the most part. Like on certain assignments, if there's a question that I don't know how to answer, I get really freaked out, especially in math. There's a, there's usually like one problem that I'm not sure how to answer and sometimes I freak out about it because, okay, how do I do this? Did we ever learn this? What am I going to do? That kind of thing. Right. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it affects people differently and, uh, it, it's, you know, for you, it's a little thing for, for me, it's the piling off of the little things for some people, they just can't deal with big stressful things. So we're going to take another break and we'll come back and we're we're going to talk about how to teach your teen mindfulness meditation. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So how do you teach your teen mindful meditation? The first step is really what we're doing here. And that's simply to talk about it with them. Talk about the benefits, talk about the techniques, talk about the problems that it can solve. The next step is by setting an example, show them how to use mindful meditation in your daily life and talk to them about the impact that it makes on you. Like anything with teens, if you preach it, but don't practice it, then your teens likely isn't likely to practice it either. It's not a do as I say, it's a do as I do, you know, set that example. So take the time and make the habit that make it a habit that you incorporate into your daily life. It'll set a good example for your teenager and you'll experience all the benefits that it offers as well. So this, this kind of is an open message to the parents that if you as a parent practice mindful meditation in your own life, Not only will you obviously get the benefits from it, but it sets the example for your teenagers. Do you think that mommy and daddy set an example on stress management and anxiety management that is worth following? I mean, yeah. Like you talked about before, you talk about your various ways on how you cope with stress. And I kind of try and follow a similar suit. Same with mommy. She has ways that she deals with stress, and I try to deal with them in similar ways as well. Right. The other thing they talk about is you can encourage them to use an app. You know, there's an app out there for everything today, right? Yep. Uh, Most teens are more likely to get behind something that includes technology. It's really a part of your your life at this point. Everything you do is 
technology centric, especially with the work from home environment and a school from home environment. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of high quality apps available. I didn't list any of them here, but you can look up meditation apps. Calm is a, is a popular one that's out there. There's a number of other ones out there and a lot of them tend to center on calming sounds to focus on calming pictures to look at uh, a lot of the stuff that we've talked about here that will help you flush those um, bad thoughts, those anxiety ridden thoughts out of your mind. Mm. Uh, an app isn't needed to practice mindful meditation, but it can be a great way to get teens to try it and learn the process. The more they're likely to try an app, they're more likely to try an app than to sit and listen to you as a parent lead them through the process. So with that in mind, let me ask you, are you, do you understand what we talk about when we're, when we're referring to mindfulness at this point in time? Yes, I understand it. And do you think it's something that you can do yourself? Probably. I mean, like you said, I kind of already did do that before I even knew what mindful, what mindfulness was. And um, when I was having trouble sleeping, you guys, you did tell me how to do some type of mindful, mindful meditation, um, such as this. So, um, yeah, I definitely think I have a good grasp and that I have the ability to, um, have mindful meditation. And it's worth noting that <clears throat> mindful meditation is only one of a number of different meditation techniques that are out there. Uh, hopefully in future podcasts. We'll cover different types of, of meditation techniques, but I think mindfulness is probably the, the easiest one to accomplish because, like you know, you do it a lot of times without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that people do for relaxation is they like to immerse themselves in something, whether it's a movie or a TV show. They want to binge their favorite show or read a book. All of those things are a way to unwind from the day to sort of drain that stress away and fill your head with something other than what you've been dealing with all day. And that's all mindfulness. You know, it's about putting the things in your head that are healthy for you when you need them. Okay. They allow you then to sleep better at night to get the rest that you need, allow you to get the sleep cycles that you need. We talked about that in a previous podcast. Mm hmm when you're more well rested because everybody has to deal with stress, right? There's no escaping it. My stress comes from work primarily. Your stress comes from school. Yep. My release is when I walk out of the office and I come home, I immediately start to distress. <clears throat> and I do that by flushing all those stressful thoughts out of my mind. It could be a conversation over dinner. It could be watching TV with you or mommy or a movie. It could be going downstairs and playing a video game. You know, one of the things that has been very helpful for you for stress was video games. Mm -hmm. We used to play, or we, we do occasionally, but we used to play Call of Duty. And just that exercise of running through and shooting inanimate objects is very stress relieving. Yeah. Uh, we would play Rock Band. You know, the physical exercise you get from drumming is, is, you know, stress relief. You play Sims now and Sims now you, you get lost in the Sims and you don't just play the game. You put challenges on yourself and those challenges result in you focusing differently. Yep. So all these things are ways to reduce stress. The last thing I did want to talk about are some simple anxiety exercises and mindfulness activities for teens. Now, this one comes from georgetownbehavioral.com. Uh, they say, although traditional meditation is very beneficial for managing stress, it's not the only form of mindfulness training. In fact, teens and adults have many options when it comes to anxiety exercises. These mindfulness activities for teens can help ground thoughts, center emotions, and encourage thoughtful behavior. So the first one they talk about is one that you've done, right? Mm-hmm. What is this? Tell us about this one. Uh, more than, uh, 
morning breathing exercises. Spend five minutes each morning and night sitting alone in a quiet place. Have the teen focus on their breathing while slowly taking deep breaths in and out. This helps center thoughts before leaving the home for school and other busy activities. Now, is that something you've ever done in the morning? Because I know you've done breathing exercises uh, at night, especially to go to sleep. Have you ever tried it at the beginning of the day to try to de-stress before you start school? Nope. Do you think you'd have time to do that? Nope. No. <laughs> you just don't have that time, that much time in the morning? Not really, no. Not even five minutes? Uh, not really. <laughs> you know, school's kind of early. All right. So the next thing that they talk about is grown-up coloring books. Now, this sounds kind of silly, I'm sure. Yes. But I'll bet you this is one that Mommy has done in the past that she's found very relaxing. Mm -hmm. uh, the coloring books have intricate patterns that require high levels of focus without being stressful. We're not talking about coloring cartoon characters or, you know, woodland animals or anything here. Adding color to the interesting designs is a th soothing activity that encourages teens to finish things they start and concentrate on tasks. Hmm. Now, I know one of the things that you resort to a lot is drawing. You're very artistically inclined. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find that when you're doing your drawings that it helps to focus and, and drain some of that stress away? Yeah, I I I seem I seem to be um, kind of a perfectionist when it comes to art, um, especially when I'm working uh, digitally, which is what I normally do with my art. Um, I like to, one of my favorite parts of the drawing process is basically doing the outline. After I did the sketching and know what I want my character to look like, drawing the outlines is probably the most de-stressing part of it because it allows me to focus on something that I enjoy and that's not too stressful. So that's very similar to the adult coloring books where you're drawing those intricate patterns, not just coloring them in at that point. Mm -hmm. So that's another uh, great example of mindfulness there, filling your mind with that artistic creation that you're producing. And the last thing that we talk about here is awareness and gratitude. They say sit in a quiet place with your eyes closed. I tend to do that more when I have a, a migraine because of the medical requirement for it. Take deep breaths in and out, focusing on the task at hand. Now, have you ever done either of these? Sit with your eyes closed just to relax or do the breathing exercises? Mm, well, sometimes at night with mommy. Okay. After spending about a minute concentrating on your breathing, move your focus to individual feelings and sounds like the feeling of the seat or the birds chirping. Kind of extend that awareness outside of your body to other things. Maybe it's the hum of a fan. Maybe it's um, a car, you know, cars going by outside. Um, maybe it's the heater going on and off. It's one of those things where you want to you want to center yourself but then you want to start sensing other things. Maybe it's a breeze that's going by. Maybe it's a cat purring. You start to extend your consciousness outside of your own body there, and you start to explore other areas with senses that you don't normally use. You know, we're so reliant on visual sensation. But try closing your mind and shutting that sense off for a while and use your other senses. Use your, sen your sense of sound, your sense of smell, you know, the sensation of, of air blowing over your, your skin. Start to immerse yourself in these other senses to try to ha gain that level of focus. Uh, try not to attach labels to these experiences. Just experience them without reacting. You'll notice how quickly the mind tries to react and label things. And try doing that for like 10 minutes just to see what kind of experience that you have. And I think what you'll find when you do this is you'll perceive the world different than you normally do. You'll perceive more of it. Like, for instance, we know dogs have an incredible sense of smell. Mm -hmm. 
we're never going to get that sense of smell. But if you perform these techniques, you may sense things that you don't normally sense. Mm. Um, there are times that we'll sit downstairs watching a, a show and, and mommy will be cold and she'll wonder, is there a breeze? And until you stop and center yourself to sense those things, you'll never really experience them. And, and by going through this exercise, it allows you to not focus on those things that are causing you stress. And that's really the, the moral of the story here with mindfulness. It's your brain is going to fill itself up with something. And you want to choose what your brain fills itself up with. If you just let it fill itself up with stress, oh, I can't get to sleep. I got a test tomorrow. I got an assignment. I got to turn in, whatever it is, then you don't have control. But if you take that time to step back, extend your senses, and fill your mind with what you want, then you can take control of those emotions. Hmm. So that was all we had today, a short show today. But I think it was important to kind of go through some of these techniques and maybe help some folks out out there who are going through some stress. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and get your closing thoughts and shout outs and finish up the podcast business. Go for your closing thoughts. Okay, so to anyone out there, whether you're a teen or an adult, and you're going through stress and anxiety about anything, uh, we do recommend that mindful meditation would work. Uh, any type of meditation would work. It has good benefits, and even if it doesn't work for you, even if one doesn't work for you, there's going to be something out there that will. Okay. I think that was pretty... Straight into the point there. Yep. Before we go, I would uh, suggest folks uh, subscribe to the podcast so you get it as soon as it goes live on Monday mornings at 8. You can get us by looking up uh, Insights into Teens for our audio versions or Insights into Things for our video versions. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, Google, and any place else you can get podcasts at this point. We would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We would appreciate it if you threw that our way. You can get audio versions of our podcast at podcast.insights and enter. Uh, nope, sorry, I had to fix that note. You can get audio versions of our podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, or you can get us on Instagram at insights into things. Or links to all of those things on our website at insightsintothings.com. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. That's right. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.